Well, hey everyone, and welcome to our physics homework tutorial. Uh, we hope you find this tutorial helpful in your study of physics, and if you do, please visit our website at www.physicsvodcast.com. There you're going to find over 200 physics examples in every topic of physics. Uh, it's sure to help you get through that physics homework. We'll see you then! We're back to talk about graphs of motion again. This time we have a velocity time graph and it says determine the total change in position. Well remember we can think about this in terms of the equation also. When we say that velocity equals change in position over time, if we're looking for the change in position we can think about that as rearranging it algebraically and writing it as velocity times time. Also realize though that if this is a multiplication uh, relationship here, then when you have a graph that includes the quantities of velocity and time together, which is what we have here, velocity and time, then what we're really indicating is that these two are going to be multiplied together. So this is where we talk about the idea of the area on the graph, the area under the curve. So we're going to go to our velocity time graph and we're going to divide it up into segments. The first segment is going to be for the first four seconds and you can think about that segment as having an area that is rectangular. Okay, so if we think about it, it makes sense. The rectangle, we have a height of two seconds over, two meters per second over here, multiplied times a width of four seconds. So if we multiply those two together, we end up with an answer of eight meters as the area of the first segment. Next, we'll look at the second part of the um, velocity time graph and you'll notice here that um, our velocity then begins a downward slope and so what we'll have to do here is we're actually going to divide this into two shapes uh, two triangles if you will our first triangle will be a right triangle right here and during this uh, segment here again we are looking at multiplying the velocity that we're traveling times the time okay well if we look at the, the actual graph here, we notice that we started with a velocity of 2 at, at this point, and we end with a velocity of 0 at this point. Okay? So our velocity then is decreasing down a distance of 2. So we have 2 units of velocity here and 2 units of time here. So, knowing those dimensions, we can find the area of this triangle. The area of a triangle is one-half times the base of two times the height of two. So, two times two is four. Multiply that by one-half, and you get a value of two meters for that area of that triangle. Our last segment, then, goes from six seconds to eight seconds. And again, notice that that velocity is continuing to decrease. Now we're in the negative range. So if we were going to talk about what this object was doing, this first two sections, it has been going with a positive velocity, so it's going one direction. At this point here, six seconds, it comes to a stop instantaneously and then turns around and starts traveling in the other direction. So the important part about this segment here is that when we consider the area under the curve, so to speak, that area is a negative value because it is a place where the velocity is in the negative direction. That area is underneath the axes. Now, the good part about it is that this area is pretty easy to find. It's the same triangular shape that we just did. So we would have one-half times our base times our height we have a base and a height of 2 again, so our value is going to be negative 2 meters 
as the total for that triangle. Now we have three different segments. If we put them all together, we have positive 8 meters here, positive 2 meters here, negative 2 meters here. Put those all together and we are back to just 8 meters as the total change in position.